Welcome to functions and or methods. I particularly like this set of, well, content for you because we get to organize things and I'm a big organizer, so go figure. There's a couple of definitions when we talk about methods or functions and I'll get into why it's either one here in a little bit, but bear with me here. So first, it's a procedure to complete a specialized task, no matter how small or large, but I'll be honest with you, we try to keep it small for a lot of reasons that I'll go over here in a second, so, so bear with me on that one. And it is a package of code. Now think of this as methods can be run any number of times that you want. That's great. We'll talk about reusability. So as soon as you create it, you can run it as many times as you want. That sounds like a plus, but you got to create it the first time. But we've talked about that with some other things already. We'll do the same thing each time it's run, no exception. Well, it depends. We'll get into that really in functions part two, but the method will try to do the same overall algorithm over and over again, but the inputs might be different. So, so there might be a little bit of a change to that. Every program must start with the main, and that's a function. You've actually seen functions before. You can tell main's a function because it has parentheses behind it. And main is considered the starting function to start everything out. Very similar to the main. Methods are sequential. We start from the top and we go towards the bottom. So any variables that we declare in here, we can use later just like we did with the main. If I crossed out get hypotenuse with main, this would look pretty similar. By the way, even though this looks like a lot of code, to be honest with you, if I take out all of the comments here, Notice that function is pretty small, but it has a very defined instruction on what it's supposed to do. <clears throat> this particular function is get hypotenuse. I think you know what that means, but notice the name, very similar to a variable, it's kind of giving away exactly what it's supposed to do. So that's what functions are in, well, in theory, let me show you a little bit more about that. Like I said, I get to organize things with functions. Now, this is what we've probably been doing with the main, is we've been adding all of these items in the main, and the main's starting to get longer and longer and longer. And especially if you have some things that are actually exactly the same, we can go ahead and convert them into a function. Now, why would we want to do that? Well, frankly, two reasons. Number one, organization. Notice if I did that, my main gets a lot smaller. But number two, let's pretend I'm on a diet. <laughs> if I, instead of a Coke, maybe I should grab a Diet Coke. Probably better for me, but, or a water. You know, I can't stand water by itself. But anyway, what if I wanted to change one thing? If I wanted to change grabbing a Coke from my normal routine where I spelled everything out in the main, I'd have to go to a couple different spots and change it. Whereas in a function, if I just, you know, wanted to do the same thing, I'd go to one spot, fix it, and that's it. That also helps with debugging too. If we know where a problem is and it's compartmentalized, here we can go to the function, maybe uh, change it from fridge to freezer instead. You know, again, this helps us compartmentalize, helps with this with organization and actually debugging as well. So there's a lot of theories of why we really wanna do this and starting to put together functions and methods.